Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x times e to the power x equals negative 1 over e, and we're going to be looking for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and I know what some of you are thinking right now. Why don't you use this? Why don't you use that? Okay. All right. Anyways, let's get started. So I have this equation x times e to the power x equals negative 1 over e. Can I ln both sides? It kind of makes sense because when you have e to the power something, if you ln both sides, then you'll get something nice. And we have e is on both sides. But here's the problem. You can't ln both sides. Well, you can, but you'll get complex answers. You don't want that. So let's go ahead and fix this a little bit. So how about negating both sides? In other words, multiplying both sides by negative 1. And now, 1 over e becomes positive. Well, while the left-hand side kind of looks negative, but here's the thing. You can tell from this equation that x needs to be less than 0. Why? Because e to the power x is always positive. And on the right-hand side, we have a negative quantity. Therefore, the product x times e to the power x needs to be negative, but e to the power x needs to be positive. Therefore, x needs to be less than 0. Awesome. Having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation now. We can ln both sides because we know negative x is positive, right? Kind of weird to say negative something is positive, but that's the case. So we can ln both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. ln negative x e to the x equals ln 1 over e. Awesome. Now, when you ln a product, you know, we have rules for logarithms, so we can write this as ln negative x plus ln e to the power x. And then 1 over e can basically be written as ln e to the power negative 1. And this negative 1 basically can be moved to the front. And as you know, that's going to be negative 1 times ln e, which is negative 1, right? Because ln e is equal to positive 1. So this is going to become equals negative 1. As easy as negative 1. Okay, great. So can we simplify this further? We have ln of negative x. We can't really do anything right now, but notice ln is defined for positives, and in this case, x is negative, so it's all good. ln e to the power x, again, we can move the x to the front, or if you already know, e to the power x and ln x are inverse functions, you know, over a certain um, domain, whatever, and so their composition will be the identity, which is x. So this is going to become x. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and solve this, but let's make it a little nicer looking by getting rid of the negative x, right? You definitely don't want that. So what can I do? Well, I know that x must be negative, right? So that negative x is positive. So how about replacing negative x with something? And I'm thinking z, right? It could be y as well. It doesn't really matter. But I wanted to use z. So I'm setting negative x equals z, but negative x is positive. Therefore, z will be positive. Awesome. Let's just remember that. So now I replace negative x with z, but that implies replacing x with negative z. Or you could write this as minus negative x, and you'll see that you have a z inside the parentheses. Okay, cool. So this is going to turn into ln z minus z. Remember, don't double the negative because it was positive. We turned it into a negative. Equals negative 1. Well, this equation still may not look very good to you. So let's make it better by adding z to both sides. ln z equals z minus 1. If it still doesn't look good, then I don't know what to say. But... If you think about it for a minute, maybe even less than that, right? I know some of you are probably, oh, I can do this in three seconds. Absolutely. You're going to realize, if you take a look at it, you're going to realize that z equals 1 works. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So z equals 1 um, is a possible solution. Now, the million dollar question is, are there any other solutions? We have to find them or we have to prove that there are no more solutions. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from a different perspective. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of calculus. And why am I doing calculus? Well, you'll see in a little bit. So suppose we have f of z equals ln z differentiated. You're going to get 1 over z. Awesome. And how about 
the other function, let's call it g of z, and that's going to be z minus 1. And then let's go ahead and differentiate it, g prime of z. Since z is linear, its derivative is going to be constant, 1. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So we have a linear function whose derivative is 1, and we have another function whose derivative is 1 over z. But notice that we said, hey, z equals 1 is a solution. What happens if I plug in 1 in the derivatives? Well, I get f prime at 1 equals 1. And how about replacing z with 1 in g prime? That's going to give me g prime at 1 is also 1. Wow, that's interesting. So it's not only that f of 1 equals g of 1, but it's also true that f prime at 1 is the same thing as g prime at 1. So put these two together and you're going to get something real cool. Let me go ahead and show you graphically what that looks like. And obviously, graphing these shouldn't be hard. Uh, obviously, much easier than x times e to the power x. So let's go ahead and take a look. ln x, or ln z, I should say, not x, because x is in the past. ln function, basically, you have um, a x intercept at z equals 1. So by the way, this is the z axis. And the other one, I don't know. You can call it t or whatever. You don't have to call it something. So at 1, we're going to have an x-intercept. And notice that as z approaches 0 from the right, I hope you know that, uh, the y values are going to approach, did I say y? Okay, that's fine. I, I guess we can call it y. Uh, they're going to approach negative infinity. So we're going to have a function like this that is increasing, has an x-intercept, and kind of goes like this asymptotically. It's going to approach. Okay, that's a big word, right? Asymptotes. So now at 1, we have the following. But what about the other function? Huh, that's not too hard to do, right? That is linear. Yeah, that's a straight line. So that should be fairly easy. Well, it goes through 1, but notice that the derivative at 1 is also 1. So what is that supposed to mean? It means, ooh, ooh, screen going like crazy. I have a line that goes through 1, 0, and it's going to go somewhere here, something like this maybe, and I could probably straighten it up. Yay. Awesome. So now we have a line that goes through 1, 0, but not only just goes, like it doesn't just cross the curve, which is y equals ln x, it is tangent to the curve, which is real cool, right? I think. Oh, by the way, I just used y for that one, so forgive me for that. If you don't like it, um, go ahead and use another variable. All right, so, and the other function is just going to be, well, or I could just, you know what, let's just stick with the f and g here. So we said that for the, the ln function, we said f of z. So this is going to be f of z equals ln z. And this is going to be g of z equals z minus 1. And as you can see, they're tangent. So there's only one intersection point, which means there's only one solution. All right, let's go ahead and quickly talk about the second method. For second method, what happens? Oh, by the way, we just found the z value, right? So what is z? z is negative x. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? So if z is 1, then x is negative 1. Yay, that's our solution. Cool. Let's take a look at the second method. What happens if I just use y equals x times e to the power x? Absolutely, you can use it. Why not? So differentiate uh, derivative of x times e to the power x plus the derivative of e to the power x times x. And you can definitely write this as e to the power x multiplied by 1 plus x. Set it equal to 0, as always. And from here, we get the critical value, x equals negative 1, because e to the power x cannot be 0. Now, let's make a table. Tables are fun, especially when you are doing calculus, right? So we have x, y prime, and y. That's probably why it's not a good idea to replace the... Um, it's probably better not to use the y there, because we're using y here. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to place the negative 1 here. This is kind of like negative infinity to positive infinity for the x values. But more importantly, um, let's take a look at the derivative. The derivative, which is this one, or this one, same thing, is going to be positive if x is greater than negative 1. And you can check that, like replace x with 0, right? You have the 0 here. So what happens if x is 0? It's going to be positive. So it's going to be positive all, all over the place, as long as it's in that interval. And otherwise, it's going to be ne negative, which means... Our function, remember, y prime and y are related in such a way that if y prime is negative on an interval, then our function has to be decreasing. 
and otherwise it is increasing because if a function is decreasing that means if you draw tangent lines their slopes are going to be negative make sense okay awesome now we have a minimum at negative one great and what is that value let's go ahead and replace uh, x with negative one i guess this notation is fine remember our function was x e to the x if you replace x with negative one you get negative one times e to the power of negative one which is the same thing as negative one over e what oh great awesome we got the value so we were looking for an equation uh, we were looking for the solution to this equation and we found it at the minimum value what is that supposed to mean let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and explain what that means so here's a graph of y equals x times e to the power x and as you can see our horizontal line which is y equals one negative one over e is tangent to the curve at whatever the value is right negative one comma negative one over e and that means the solution is x equals negative one and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and hasta la vista